สวัสดีครับสบายดีไหมครับ and welcome to Chiang Mai Thailand สวัสดีเจ้า Hi guys nice to meet you again so um, we always try and bring you like really good valuable helpful content and mm -hmm. I did a video a couple months ago and it was about Westerners that move here or plan to retire here and want to stay a long time and they kind of failed at that you know something mm -hmm. went wrong and mm -hmm. uh, when I looked at the comments on that video and there was more than 1500 and I read and respond to every one of them the comment that I saw a few people make was that they feel like outsiders in Thailand uh -huh. um, that that was one of the reasons why they left they never really assimilated into the Thai community and they That made him feel bad, and most mm -hmm. expats I find are really happy and content here. Um, but I thought that would be a really good video to talk about why some Westerners don't feel comfortable here, mm -hmm. and uh, and how we can change that. Because I actually remember um, feeling that way many years ago, and and I kind of I I, I learned some things to mm -hmm. completely change that. Mm -hmm. So. So we're going to talk about That's that. That's a very great uh, topic. And by the way, we are in a really good mood today yes. because <laughs> because a few days ago, uh, the, the Mayo Mall had their mm -hmm. 70% off once a year sale, and Joy got this beautiful blouse on sale. Yes, very nice. Kun suai mak mak jing jing cap. And I got these really mm. cool. Genuine Ray-Ban <laughs> sunglasses, and I think probably every woman in Thailand is going to be secretly <laughs> oh, desiring yes. me. What do you think? You are so attractive with these glasses. <laughs> All right, thank you uh, very much. I can see out of the corner of my eye what you're doing. <laughs> I'm okay with that, just so you think I'm attractive. Okay. Okay, so um, I tell you what, um, Joy's going to go to uh, the coffee shop, coffee shop mm -hmm. here at the, the temple, and I'm going to talk to you guys. And when I'm all done, I'm mm -hmm. going to find you in the coffee shop, okay. and we're going to talk to you. And, uh, you know, you and I have not compared notes on this subject, so I want to hear from you as a Thai person um, that deals with a lot of Westerners. Do you think Westerners are outsiders? All right. And why does that happen? And mm -hmm. what do you do to change it? Okay. Is that a deal? Yeah. See all you right. at the coffee shop. All right, let me get right to the point. Uh, if you come to Thailand to live here, to make a new life here, and you fail to assimilate, you really feel like a, an outsider, like kind of a social outcast. The question is, is it the Thais or is it you? And I'm going to be blunt, and I don't mean to be offending anybody, but I think really it's on you. Um, there's two reasons that basically people tend to kind of have a tough time with, uh, with assimilating into the Thai community. Um, the first one is misinterpreting what Thais are saying and doing. And the second thing is basically what you're projecting to Thais, your attitude, what's on your face. Let's start with the first one, all right? Um, I've heard, I hear a lot of people tell me, and, and a lot of the people that posted in that last video that I mentioned, the ones that said that uh, they felt like an outsider, many of them added they felt like Thais were, were liars and they weren't straight with them and things like that. Well. Um, here's the thing. I want to use an example. Um, let's say that uh, Joy, uh, she owns a house here in Serapi, about 20 minutes outside of central Chiang Mai. So let's say she gives me the assignment. She says, Randy, I want to remodel the bathroom. It's your job to, to hire a local guy to do that. So she calls a guy, he shows up, and I'm there talking to him. And I say, do you speak English? And he says, yes. And I describe the tile that I want and the colored grout and the pattern I want. I want a herringbone pattern. All right, and I say, gonna, are you going to arrive on, you know, everything I say, he says, yes, yes, okay. Very good, very good. And, uh, uh, and I say, can you start tomorrow at 9 o'clock? And he says, yes, 9 o'clock. So, 9 o'clock comes, uh, no guy. Tuesday comes, no guy. Wednesday, maybe he doesn't pick up his phone. And he shows up Thursday in the afternoon with a big smile on his face, <laughs> like, like nothing's wrong. And meanwhile, me as a kind of... Uh, Uh, kind of an organized Westerner, you know, I'm, I'm thinking this guy lied to me. He's kind of like disrespecting me. He doesn't care about what I think or what I want. He hasn't shown up for four days. 
here's the problem. Um, that guy probably didn't speak any English, um, or he spoke a little bit of English. Um, and this happens all the time in Thailand. They're nodding, they're smiling, they repeat a few words back of what you say, but they're really not understanding. And I'm not being critical. Hey, after all, we're in Thailand. It's, it's our job to speak Thai. It's not their job to speak English. But, you know, as Westerners, we're so used to the English language being spoken everywhere in the world. We just kind of assume other people are going to speak English. And, and in Thailand, it's actually less than most other countries. Um, very few Thais speak very good English. Um, many Thais barely speak any English at all. It's just the reality. So the problem in that example I just gave was all on me. I mean, I assumed he was understanding, um, but he wasn't. So he wasn't lying. He wasn't being just disrespectful. Um, if you wonder, well, why didn't he say something like, you know, my cow jaya, you know, I, I don't understand. Um, well, it's kind of hard to describe. I think part of it is Thai people tend to be kind of shy. Um, and the other part is kind of the issue of, of losing face, that they don't want to look bad in front of someone, especially a, a Westerner. Um, so they just admit, they just act like everything is fine. And, and the other part of it is kind of the sabai sabai. I mean, sabai means easy. And when people say like sabai sabai, they're really talking about kind of a lifestyle in Thailand. It's just kind of like, no worries, everything will work out. So in his mind, everything is kind of sabai sabai, because when we get our tile done, it's not going to change the world. It's not going to change my life or his. So whether he shows up on Monday or Thursday um, at nine o'clock in the morning as planned or three in the afternoon, most Thais are kind of thinking, eh, what does it matter? It's just a different mindset. So we have to learn not to let our mindset as Westerners, which is completely different, we're kind of on the OCD side about something needs to be fixed, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to get it done. Um, Thais think like one step ahead, not three steps ahead. So that's, that's part of the issue. And I'll add something else to that. When you interact with, in our example, this guy laying tile, and it could be anything, it could be someone you hire to clean your house or do your laundry or whatever it might be, um, if he starts laying that tile wrong, if I acted like the typical Westerner would in the West, um, I would say like, what are you doing? I told you I wanted herringbone and you're going in a subway pattern. And I, I told you I wanted, you know, light beige grout and this is a dark brown grout. Like, what are you doing? Well, if you have that attitude in, in Thailand, um, it's not gonna go well for you. Um, the person you're working with will smile and say everything is fine and you think, okay, I got that straightened out. But you know what? They probably won't show up the next day because you've, you've, they've lost face because of what you've said. Um, they don't like confrontation. They don't like being embarrassed. They're very much into politeness. So you have to kind of learn in Thailand how to say things in a different way. So in that instance, I would say, you're doing a beautiful job there, but I think it would look better with this pattern, don't you think? And would it be possible to delay this job until you can get this color tile? Don't you think that would look good also? Um, so, so now you're talking, you're communicating, you're not showing any disrespect for what they've done or decisions that they've made. So that's a great way to avoid misunderstandings and, and lose people that are doing a, a job for you. All right, so let's get to the second part of that issue, which is your attitude. So a lot of people move here for the obvious reasons. They want the, the low cost of living. They want a great quality of life. Uh, they want the great food. They want to visit the beaches. They want all that stuff that comes with Thailand. But they seem to think in the back of their mind that they can kind of keep the rest of their lifestyle. In other words, they think that they can give themselves basically the good of America, the good of the UK, whatever it might be, but still get the best of Thailand. And so they get disappointed <laughs> when they realize you really can't live an American lifestyle or a UK or Australian lifestyle here. You've got to fully adapt to the Thai's, Thai way of life. And the problem is, is if you're not happy with that, if you realize you can't get that and it, and it puts you in a bad mood, um, it's going to show and you're really not gonna be welcomed in the same way with the Thai community than a person that's truly happy to be here and truly embraces the Thai community. So ask yourself, what are you showing the Thais when you walk around? Are you showing them a happy face? 
or kind of a grumpy face. Um, and, and what are you contributing to the Thai community? I'm sure sometimes in your condo building, there's an old lady or an old man or whatever it might be, and you see them carrying a big bag of food or whatever it might be. Do you offer to help and carry that for them? Do you do any acts of kindness to your neighbors and your community? Are you doing anything to make the city in which you live better and Thais are seeing you do that and contribute? Or are you just a taker here for the beautiful women, the good food and the low cost of living? It's fine if you wanna be in that latter category and be a taker, but don't expect to really be welcomed into the Thai community. All right, now let me give you some specific things that you can do to assimilate into the Thai community and, and really feel welcome and, and a part of Thailand. The biggest single thing that you can do is learn to speak Thai. And I may have lost a lot of you because <laughs> you may be saying right now, I've tried to learn Thai and I can't do it. The, the tonality, it's just impossible. And you know what? It is a really hard language to learn. Not really the... Uh, the grammatical part is actually easier than other languages, but the tonalities make it, make it so difficult. And I'll be the first to admit, I am not a fluent Thai speaker. I mean, I study it some, um, I rely on my girlfriend a lot uh, as a Thai speaker <laughs> to act on my behalf, but I do continually try and work to get better and I can say basic Thai things. I can engage in a really basic Thai conversation, but that's really critical to really be part of the Thai community. And let me give you an example. Let's say that you're in your home community, whether it's America or Australia, UK, Canada, whatever it might be, and a person from China or Thailand moves into your community and they don't speak a word of English and they don't really make an effort. Um, do you really think there's a chance that they're going to ever feel part of that culture in the West? Um, they're basically gonna be ignored because you can't really interact with people if you can't communicate. So take that same situation, but let's reverse it. And now let's put you as that person from China who was visiting America, now you're the American in, in Thailand. How could you really expect to integrate if you can't speak the language? So, um, I mean, really think about that. It should be motivation to study. And it's not that hard to learn, at least at a foundational level, whether you're going to school here in Thailand or you're just learning on YouTube. Well, the good news is you can actually be a true part of the Thai community and feel welcome like I do without being a fluent Thai speaker. In fact, you can do it without being even a really good Thai speaker. So I'm gonna give you two specific things. So number one is you need to learn one phrase and that is ka tod put pasatai mai dai ka or ka if you're a woman. That's just a cap or ka is what you add at the end of the sentence to make it polite. So that's basically saying, excuse me, um, I can't speak Thai. It makes a world of difference whether you're a Westerner walking up to someone and just expecting them to speak English, which a lot of us do. I mean, let's face it, English is spoken all around the world and we just get in the habit of thinking, I can just walk up to anyone, speak English, they're gonna understand me. And here in Thailand, if you're in you know, the malls or uh, you know, big restaurants, things like that, yeah, they'll speak English, but don't think that the average Thai person will speak English, actually most don't. Uh, most even don't speak, you know, more than a little bit of Thai. So it's an unfair expectation. So if you go up to them expecting them to speak English, you're going to put them on the defensive. They're going to be afraid of losing face because they can't communicate with you. Um, and you're going to get just like, you know, uh, uh, no, 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 no English. But if you go up and you say that phrase that I just said, ka tod put pasatai mai dai, I can't speak Thai, you're basically starting off by humbling yourself. You're acknowledging you're, you're on their turf. You don't expect them to speak English. It's gonna make them much more likely. You would be amazed at how the person who would normally be the guy going, no, um, will really make an effort to try and communicate, um, whether it's just giving you directions or asking a simple question. So that one phrase can really change your life. So you can learn that. By the way, I'm filming this today at uh, Wat Prasing, which is a really beautiful temple. It's, it's quite a large compound, and it's right in the middle of the old city. So it's a beautiful place to visit. So if you haven't been here before, uh, check it out. Hey, I made reference in the, in the opening that I could really identify with people being an outsider because for the first few years of coming here, 
um, I was I was one of them. I mean, it's only been really since 2022, um, basically just two years, that I really start to feel like I'm I'm welcome and I'm part of the community uh, and I'm I'm integrated as much as a foreigner can be. And I think initially um, my problem was, and I you know I uh, I would come. The, <laughs> Let me start over again. When I first started coming to Thailand about eight years ago, is to visit my daughter, Haley. Some of you might know her. She's a very popular visa agent. She's got a great agency here in, in Chiang Mai. So I come to Chiang Mai to visit my daughter. And when I wasn't visiting with her, I didn't know anybody. I didn't really know how to interact and find people to hang out with. So I'd walk around by myself, I'd eat great food, I'd visit temples, and I enjoyed myself, but I felt very isolated. But now, so I can identify with you guys that feel that way, even when you're living here, it's, it's easy to feel isolated as a Westerner sometimes. But there really are some specific things that you can do to start that integration process. The most important thing that you can do to change your life completely is to get a Thai girlfriend or a Thai boyfriend or whatever it might be, because it will really change your life. So not only are you interacting with someone that can, on a daily basis, you know, talk to you and show you Thai culture and Thai thoughts, uh, let's be really practical. <laughs> if you've got a Thai girlfriend, you've got a tour guide, you've got a translator, it really changes you know, how you look at the community in which you're, you're living. So it's an ideal thing to do. But some of you guys are thinking, or you ladies are thinking, well, I, I don't want, or I can't get a Thai girlfriend or a Thai boyfriend. So what's the next best thing? Well, um, a Thai friend is great, but even if you don't do that, um, here's what you do, is you expand your circle of friends in terms of your, your expat friends. And um, the more you do that, the more Thais you're gonna meet because a lot of expats, a lot of Westerners have a lot of Thai friends, whether it be a friend, girlfriend, boyfriend. And because they're dating or friends with a Westerner, they typically always speak English. So if you can't be making Thai friends speaking Thai, make Thai friends through your other expat friends that speak English. Um, that's worked out wonderfully for me because I've met Joy's family, her friends, her co-workers, and they're great people and most of them do speak English. So uh, that's the next best thing that you can do and you can really fully be part of the Thai community. And here's something that you can do to get to know Thais directly, not through your friends. Sports is a great medium to meet people. And uh, whatever that sport might be, I don't care whether it's golf or tennis, pickleball is getting to be more popular here. Badminton is super popular in Thailand and they've got courts all over. So even if you've never played badminton before, if you've played any racket sport, I picked up badminton in no time because I play tennis and pickleball. So you can take up badminton and start going there. You'll meet tons of Thai people, athletic people, a lot of nice, young, attractive <laughs> ladies. And you can be making your own Thai friends. You've got the sport in common. So it's a great way to get to know Thai people. All right, guys, that wraps up what I wanted to talk about. But don't go away, because remember, we're going to go to the Temple Coffee Shop and talk to Joy. So we can hear from an actual Thai who deals with Westerners all the time. Um, does she think that Westerners are sometimes outsiders? And, and why is it? And what can we do about it? So let's head over there. And I, uh, I apologize that uh, <laughs> I look so damn good. Um, but you know what? It's a cross to bear. So we're going to head over to the coffee shop right now. I apologize in advance if some really beautiful young Thai women stop me and you know, want a date or something. It's, what can a guy do? All right, so it's, it's a bit of a walk over to find Joy. I'll put a map on screen so you can find the coffee shop here. It's a little bit hard to find. And as we walk over, I've never mentioned in my pre-Thailand life, besides being a lawyer, I was also a writer. And right now, uh, one of the novels that I wrote, you can read the first 50 pages for free online. It's actually recommended by the United States Figure Skating Association. That's the entity that oversees our Olympic team. And happily, it's gotten really nice reviews. And in case you are traveling to Thailand and you need a good book, or you're already in Thailand and retired and sitting around the pool and you need something good to read, I hope that you enjoy it. All right, here's the coffee shop and I see joy.
Okay guys, I found Joy and she has been in a soundproof booth. <laughs> <laughs> she did not hear what I said. Hey, but before that, we've each got a frappuccino. Oh, a, yes. uh, not a frappuccino, ice mocha, ice mocha and mm -hmm. it's really good. Let's check, 60 baht. Mm -hmm. They make great coffee here, everywhere in Thailand, in fact. Okay, here's the question, honey. Mm -hmm. So if a Westerner is living in Thailand long-term, but they still feel like an outsider. Mm -hmm. They really don't feel like they're part of the Thai community. Give me the two main reasons that you think, they, why, why, why would they feel that way? Okay, let me think about it. I think like the main reason for that is like language barrier. Okay. You're <clears throat> in Thailand, if you can speak some Thai and you can like, it, it can help you a lot better. Okay. To, to fit in the community and, what, and another thing is different culture I think um, we are in Thailand and uh, we are different I know that but uh, if you try to understand and try to um, um, like uh, understand the way we live our life mm -hmm. here the way we are so uh, and learn our culture understand our lifestyle is gonna help okay mm -hmm. that's what I said <laughs> Really? Good job! <laughs> you didn't make me look stupid. <laughs> hey, you guys, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope you subscribe. We hope you found this helpful. And uh, if, you, uh, if you know someone that either lives in Thailand or is thinking of coming here, it'd be great if you shared this video because I would love for a lot of people that are living here, have lived here, to share their experiences in the comment. It's, it's, it's really, really helpful to others to see what real expats um, have to say and I know mm -hmm. in the last video I talked about before the why some Thai, Thai leaves video did I say that right why some I said it wrong why some <laughs> Westerners leave Thailand yeah. um, <laughs> but um, you know probably 95% of the people responding said hey we love Thailand mm -hmm. they've got a Thai girlfriend a Thai spouse we've got a family we love it here um, so it's nice to read real people that are kind of affirming what I'm saying that I found that um, but I want you to hear from people that don't feel the same way and maybe they can say why. So please leave a comment and let me know, let us know um, what your thoughts are on this subject. It's gonna help everybody um, that's watching it and thinking about coming here. So please comment below. Comment, like, share, all that kind of stuff. I hope to see you again. And until we see you next time, safe travels. Safe travels. Mm-hmm.